thing that we talk about is called Jacob Stone, or is actually what oftentimes is called to uh, historical writings as Jacob's Pillar, and that uh, he had this dream about something going and coming, which I actually want to let you know has to do with an opening of a portal and the Nephilim coming down. Um, Prince William, I'll read that in a minute. Yeah, thanks for that. the note. I'll read it here in just a second. Um, there's a book that I want you to get called Jacob's Pillar, Stone of Destiny. It's written by E. Raymond Capt, C-A-P-T. Now, what this is about is E. Raymond Capt was a professor of archaeology and um, the, his book can be found at Artisan Publishers, artisanpublishers.com and you just type in their little search engine, Jacob's Pillar, and you'll get this book. This book outlines the history documenting archaeologically the Anglo-Saxons' identity being hidden from them, their genetic reasons for who they are, and the battles that they've had. Now, we we often see that, you know, we have a lot of stories about things, and we're going to go into the reason uh, that we have another book here we're going to go over that's very related to all this by a fellow by the name of Andy Lloyd, and I'm not familiar with him, but I am his book. So we're going to uh, chat here in just a second about that. But we're talking about there's this um, story about the Stone of Destiny. Now, the Stone of Destiny has had another turnover since it went in 1996. This book, however, was um, republished in 2005 but I don't know that any changes were made, but it does mention that there's supposed to be three turnovers. But the royal lines of, of the lineage of the kings is in here, uh, via the kings of Ireland, the kings of Scotland, and so forth. And uh, it says it's tracing the roots uh, and symbols that represent the crown and uh, a lot of the... Um, symbolism in there. Another one that I want you to get into is real interesting. Is called the Scottish Declaration of Independence. And that's also by E. Raymond Capt. It's a, uh, available from the same place. It's called the Scottish Declaration of Independence. The reason why this is important is that uh, Scotland's most precious possession, basically, is what is called a letter from Robert the Bruce, you know who that is, to the Pope John the 22nd, Pope John the 22nd. In other words, he just threw it in the face of the Pope and said, leave us alone. We are free people, so get you and your little Nephilim, little religious bandits out of our lives. And so they uh, wrote this thing called the Declaration of Arboroth. Called and it's often known as the Scottish Declaration of Independence. Basically, it's it's still you know uh, there in the House of Edinburgh, but it's a parchment or not a parchment. I think it's a skin where there are beads that are uh, clamped onto tethers or little um, leather strips of leather hanging off the bottom of this, uh, where each one of the 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 uh, groups agreed to the declaration. And so what it is, it's Bruce's letter that preserves, it says here, an intriguing uh, a document of the origin of the Scots and provides a link of one of history's most fascinating problems. What was the fate of the so-called lost tribes of Israel? And this very document helps answer that question. And we have just acquiesced and allowed them to tell us <laughs> what, what we're supposed to think about this. So I'm challenging you to, you know, maybe not. 
from the Declaration of Arbroath or the Scottish Declaration, we get many, many of our things here in the United States and many of the documents of freedom for the Western society. And so when we can see that that could have been compromised because we had these creatures coming to take us over and enslave us, yet we had to continue to understand that we're really free people, we over and over have battled them and over and over have lost, and there's been other civilizations completely wiped out by them, and this is a revolving door, and we need to not forget this. It says here, from the Declaration, we discover Robert the Bruce and his knights, whose seals are affixed to the document, date their beginning as a nation 1,200 years after going out of Egypt, Exodus, excuse me, from the people. Thus, they claim to be descent from the Israelites of Egypt. So, this uh, back cover says, on the 6th of April, 1320, King Robert of Scotland authorized the sending of a letter to Pope, which became <laughs> what many call Scotland's most precious possession, and the document is called the Declaration of Arbroath, basically saying we're free people. You know, Robert the Bruce and Wallace and all the fighters of freedom still continue, and many of us still have today anger when we get taken over. So, so much so that we don't even understand that Rudyard Kipling was actually writing about it and the heritage in many things, even to the point of writing uh, one thing called the, the a poem called The Wrath of the Awakened Saxon, and I'm going to read it to you right now. It was not part of their blood. It came to them very late, with long arrears to make good when the Anglo-Saxon began to hate. In other words, it wasn't in the Anglo-Saxon's blood to be mean, awful, nasty, and hate. It didn't come to them but later, not because of the blood, but just they were forced into a corner. So it says here, they were not easily moved. They were icy and willing to wait till every count could be proved. Ere the axon began to hate, their voices were even and low. Their eyes were level and straight. There was neither sign nor show when the ax and Saxon began to hate. It was not preached to the crowd. It was not taught by the state. No man spoke it aloud when the Saxon began to hate. It was not suddenly bred. It was not swiftly abate. Through the chilled years ahead, when time shall count from the date that the Saxon began to hate. He was forced into a corner, and he was forced to fight these monstrosities that came down. That doesn't mean that if these people had come to our planet and decided to be good neighbors and form a nice community that we wouldn't have welcomed them. But they started acting like little devils, like they were. And so they weren't able to cooperate. And today, yes, their children are still among us, behaving poorly. Our system of government has been infiltrated, and our ability to try and protect ourselves is gone. In the meantime, we're in a war, and that war is being started by them, not the Anglos, but hidden inside the covers of the family is the middle brother pointing to the Anglo-Saxon and saying, no, it's his problem. I want us to remember this is a real battle. This is a real war, but it's not because those before they came back hated each other. They started. They make us fight each other. So the question.